Hey everybody, it's Lon Seipin and we are back at CES 2017. This is dispatch number three. This one's going to be a little different than the last one. I'll tell you why in a second, but I do want to mention our content is being sponsored by Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run. It's my favorite cord cutting device. You can bring cable into your computer network with a cable card or do an over the air antenna onto your computer network. Really cool stuff, works with everything. See the playlist down below and see how I've been using it over the last couple of years. So today's dispatch is going to be intermixed. We're going to have some product uh, uh, flybys of a few different booths of things that we found interesting, but I spent a lot of time today doing some meetings and uh, having some interviews. So in this video, we're going to have an interview with the guys from HD Frequency. Uh, they make a uh, antenna for your over-the-air broadcast, and I figured it'd be kind of fun to sit down and actually talk to them and hear some tips and tricks as to uh, how to improve your over-the-air reception, and they'll tell us a little bit about their product. Uh, we also have an interview, which I just wrapped up, with ODG, and we interviewed them uh, two years ago. They make AR glasses. Uh, these are powered by Android, and I have to say, of all the things I've seen so far, uh, their consumer product, which will be coming out later in the year, probably towards the end of the year, uh, is probably among the best things I've seen here at the show. Uh, really crisp and clear screen, a Qualcomm 635 processor, brand new. Uh, it's an augmented reality uh, platform, but you can also uh, run any Android app on it, too. It is really cool. We're going to have a full interview uh, with them as well. So what we're going to do first is do that antenna interview. We'll put some products in between, then you'll see the interview with ODG. I'll also be uploading the interview separately to the Extras channel, so you can catch them on there too. So without further ado, let's get into the first interview. I'm here with Josh McDonald. He's actually from Connecticut. He's not far from where I am, except where he lives in the state. It's like it may as well be another uh, you know, continent away because there's so much <laughs> traffic. But uh, he's with a company called HD Frequency. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to just talk about over the air antennas. And they make uh, some of the best ones. In fact, the wire cutter, I believe, said these were the ones to get, right? Top of the line, yes, sir. So uh, I figured, hey, let's go talk to these guys, figure out what they've got for products, and then get some tips on how you can bring in free over-the-air content to your house, even if you don't think you can get it. That's been one of my problems. We were talking off camera about maybe how to fix some of my problems. So why don't we first talk about these antennas and what makes them different from some of the other ones out there? Absolutely, yeah. Well, first off, appreciate you having us. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've been doing this for about three years, and we have a premium antenna design here. We have three different models, and it's our cable, cable cutter line. So our large one that you're holding on, that's the cable cutter. That has a 50-mile radius. Um, I'm holding, holding our AeroWave, which has a 35-mile radius. And then we have a Cable Cutter Mini that has a 25-mile radius, which is perfect for city urban use. So with our antennas, we, we use a solid uh, metal structure. We use high-grade aluminum. We have a special uh, powder coating and anodization process. Um, we partnered with a rocket scientist from the NSA, and he helped us with the design based off the materials that we're using. So our, our performance is optimal. We, we position ourselves as a premium antenna, and with the proliferation of cable cutting and the convergence of OTT and OTA this year, there's a lot of buzz around how can you get your hands on a good, solid antenna, and that's, that's why we're here. And what's interesting about these is just the overall design. Obviously, there's engineering that goes into how this works. And really, at, at, at its core, it's, it's metal that's shaped in a certain way, and you've got a plug here on the end for a cable that goes to your television. So what goes into designing an antenna like this to make it work better than just my, I, when I was a kid, I used to be the rabbit ears. The so, big old rabbit yeah, ears, yeah, yeah. Like the kid, or me, the kid would hold the TV so that the signal would get <laughs> turned, yeah, try to get the exactly. antenna or sure. something. So, yeah. so what makes these, you know, this design, you have that, you know, the, the NSA engineer designing it for you, but what goes into trying to figure out how to capture the best signal? Uh, sure, no, it's a great question. There's a lot of science behind this. So based off the size that we were trying to do and we were trying to get a slim profile because our antenna is both indoor as well as outdoor so based off the the powder coating that we have on here it allows you two options where you can place it indoors where most of our co uh, customers do that but if you're not able to receive receptions you have the second option to go ahead and move it outside so it gives you the flexibility it's more of a, uh, a second use for your antenna where you can use it indoors but if you're going to uh, a tailgate football game if you're going hiking camping RVing uh, if you're on the beach, you can certainly take our antenna. Uh, and because of its durability, um, which a number of our reviews have spoken to, um, it adds to that longevity and the lifelong of the product. So yeah, It's got some decent thickness to it. It's not going to... Uh, it has some weight to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're holding these. I mean, you can get a sense there's you know a couple pounds in your hand there. So, so yeah, it's the overall design. Um, you can see you know we have a square diamond pattern design there. Um, we use a high-grade uh, Balin transformer, and that kind of transforms the signal in through a high-grade coaxial cable that we also use. Um, a lot of our uh, other uh, competitors in the industry will use copper clad steel, and that's the center conductor that runs through the center. Uh, with our uh, cables in particular for this RG6, 
uh, we'll use a solid copper center conductor. So that combined with the high-grade aluminum, the special anodization process, and the powder coating, it kind of adds to the overall receptivity and the, and the premium quality of our antenna. And you've got a small, medium, and a large. Yes. So why would I need, well, I, I know I probably need this, because I don't get anything, right? Yes. <laughs> so, and, and I would guess putting this on the roof is probably the best way to go. How would a customer determine what size antenna they need? Sure. So we recommend uh, all our customers go to antennaweb.org, plug in your zip code, and it's going to tell you the towers that are most closest to you. So you'll have a sense be before you purchase any antenna, whether it's ours or a competitor, uh, of how many channels you can expect to receive. So we always recommend folks go there first, check that out. Um, based on where you are, it does give gradings of the signal quality and strength. So uh, off camera, Lon, we were looking at your zip code, and for you, we had some violets, um, which means typically you need an outdoor install. So for you, yeah, definitely the cable cutter, 50 mile radius, you should be able to put in, pull in some channels, but it would have to be a mast, which we do sell separately, um, where you can do an outdoor install. So you have to get it up high and outside, right? Exactly, so yeah. up, up off a roof or something like that. Typically off a roof, or it could be on your ridge line. Um, yeah, so somewhere with some height to it. Now, when I was a kid, I remember we had an antenna on the roof, and, and in addition to me acting as the rabbit ears, occasionally I'd have to go and turn this dial, and the antenna yes. on the roof would move. Um, so, uh, and then it got blown down in the hurricane, and that was, everybody's antenna went the same day in 86. Right. So um, when you have something like this, what is there a, a key direction you want to point it towards, or do you just try to trial and error it until you get it? Sure, right? so, so there's as much science to this as there is an art form, and, that, and part of that art form is based on uh, knowing where the antenna towers are, each one of our antennas are omnidirectional. So it does give you that, um, you know, that rotational degree where you don't have to directionalize it as opposed to the old Yagi antennas mm -hmm. like you right. described when you're growing up. So with these, um, you do want to directionalize the face as much as you can, but you will receive omni-signal. So with this, it's, it's, there is a little bit of, um, you do have to try to play around and find the optimal sweet spot. Um, it typically takes five, 10 minutes. So a couple of scans on your TV, um, you'll be able to see right away, okay, I'm great getting everything. Uh, you can see your signal quality, your signal strength per channel on a lot of the newer TVs. So, um, and of course, if, if you're looking for the best tuner on the market, we partner with our friends, uh, Silicon Dust and HD Home Run. Um, and that's, w that's one of the things that we use when we do a lot of our scans. So when we do an apples to apples comparison, um, we always try to go through one of the best tuners and you know, not all tuners are made equal within. So that's interesting, so your TV might be part of the problem too. So the tuner quality exactly. inside a, a less expensive television perhaps may not be as good as a uh, higher end TV. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we've had a lot of customers and you know, they'll call in, and I only get a few channels and we ask them about their TV, we'll tell them about their tuners, so um, that is a potential issue. So not all tuners are made equal. So even on some high end TVs, um, you know, the, the manufacturer might assume, well, it's a high end TV, nobody's gonna use an antenna. But mm -hmm. uh, in the States, more, more and more people are cutting the cord and uh, saving money every month. And the strategy with like an HD home run device is just a single run to one device and then go out into your IP network, right? Absolutely, and that's why we're such a, a great complimentary product with theirs and we always try to uh, bundle with them wherever possible because it's an all-in-one cord cutter solution. So you have your one antenna, you run it through your HD home run which is one of the best tuners on the market and then from there it's into your wireless network so any device on your home wireless network is now getting an amazing over-the-air signal. And then I noticed for people in urban environments on, on the window over there we'll do some b-roll cut away because our camera gets totally blown out by that window but um, the uh, uh, you have it pointed at a building next door. Why is that? So the interesting thing, and, and this is why we um, we have our smaller uh, antenna, the Cable Cutter Mini, for urban and city use, is that there's a lot of interference. So sometimes you'll get bouncing, you'll get refraction. Um, so our Mini actually has the low, one of the lowest interference ratio, SWR interfer interference ratios. And that's because uh, where we are now in our suite at the Palazzo, the antenna towers are actually on the other side of the building. Um, so in theory, we should not get anything, but we're actually getting a, a refraction and a bounce of the antenna signals off the wind, which is right next door to us, okay, yeah. and that's how we're gathering signals. So with our small mini antenna, you'll show the picture later, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting 79 channels on this TV right oh, here. That's pretty decent. O bouncing off a building next Bouncing door, off so. a building, So you yes. get signals in all sorts of crazy ways. All then. sorts of crazy ways you <laughs> gather it, and that's why it's important to know, based on where you are, um, you know, it, it, where we are now, we wouldn't want the, the large one mm -hmm. uh, in, up in the window. Um, the, the smaller one has that better interference ratio. So based off the refraction, based off the bounces, it kind of gathers that and cuts out some of the noise that a longer range antenna might not do otherwise. Now, the, what's the price range on these, going from small, medium to large? So the Cable Cutter Mini is at $39.99 price range. The Airwave, which I'm holding, is $49.99, and the Cable Cutter that you're holding on is uh, $79. Very good. Well, thanks for your time. It's very Absolutely. informative. And I appreciate I'm, your time. I have a new Anya. project to do when I get home. So Indeed. And we're <laughs> happy to help. on the roof, so we'll see if we can get it to work. So Absolutely. Thanks for your time. And where can people find you on, online? We're on hdfrequency.com, and um, you know, I'm sure we'll see the video blog on Lawn TV. Excellent.
Well, thank you very much, and we'll continue our look at CES on day two. And we got a look today at the new NVIDIA Shield TV. This is the second generation of that product. It is smaller, but it has the same performance as the old one. Uh, but you are in a much smaller package. It starts now at $199 for the 16 gigabyte unit. Uh, they have uh, made the controllers smaller, and they also pack in now the uh, TV remote control for that price. Uh, there is also the Pro Edition available with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, that one will sell for $299. Again, you'll get the uh, TV remote control as as well as the new game controller packed in as well. It also has Google AI support, so that new Google Assistant, Google Home kind of thing is going to work with it. And when we get our hands on one, we'll do a full review, so stay tuned. So we're here at 8-Bit Doze booth, and I love retro stuff. And some of you asked if I'd seen any retro stuff at the show. Well, here it is. There's, you can't get more retro than this huge Nintendo controller here. The other thing that I found in the wild, which I've never seen with my own eyes, by the way, is one of these little mini NESs, and they have a wireless adapter for it that works with their wireless controller that uh, we looked at the other day. We actually looked at the uh, Super Nintendo version of it, but if you are more a Super Famicom, they've got one of those too. So lots of cool stuff here. The other thing that I like about uh, these guys is that they are coming up with some really cool concepts, and this is a concept desktop arcade. I would buy one of these in a heartbeat. It's like made out, it's wood. It's like a really like sturdy device. Looks like they cut it out of wood. I can't imagine what this might cost. Maybe they'll come up with something a little less uh, expensive. But this is pretty cool. You got a real arcade joystick, a nice screen here. This would be awesome with like a Raspberry Pi or something. So I'm going to email them and encourage them to make this because I want to own one of these things and put it on my uh, kitchen counter, which will drive my wife crazy. But I think I should have one of these. Found something else really cool here. I'm with uh, Chris from uh, Index Incorporated, and I, I wanted him to tell us about this little thing. A lot of people are talking about it. This is the, what is this called? This is the Super Retro Boy by Retrobit. This is like a little Game Boy, isn't it? It is essentially a little Game Boy. Uh, the cool thing about it is it does all three, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color in one little compact unit. It has a backlit screen. It has little ergonomic sides, so you can hold it for a long period of time, and it's rechargeable. So you just put the, the original cartridges in here, and you're good to go? Exactly. You just plug them right in in the back, slip them right there as we have the Game Boy Advance game, and turn it on. And when do you think this will come out, and how much? It is estimated to come out about August, and it should retail for about $79.99. Now, you know I've been carrying the water on a lot of these product intros, but I wanted Chris to uh, tell us about this one because it looks really cool. But I really wanted to know, uh, you're in the business of selling video games and accessories and hardware. What's going on with this retro thing? It seems like everybody wants to play their old games again. I believe retro is definitely on the rise again. I mean, anyone that played these games in the past has a fond kind of memory about them. And the cool thing about it is since people are making a lot of these new consoles again, they can relive these memories. They can relive their childhood and make retro new again. So everything old, Everything old school is now the new cool. I see that, that classic NES Mini, which you can't even get. It's like just selling out. I can't even get one. I've been trying to get one myself. I can't even find it. First time I saw one was right over there. So that gives you an idea as to where it's at. So you're seeing a huge resurgence in this. Definitely. There's a lot, a big boom in retro gaming and everyone, even a lot of younger kids that never even experienced these games, they're experiencing it for the first time. And they're kind of seeing where the roots came from, how it all started, and they're really enjoying it. Really cool. I, I'm, I, I can tell you, I just turned 40, so this is like a, you know, my midlife crisis is playing all these old, <laughs> these old games again. So uh, where can people find all these things? The easiest place to find any of the RetroBit accessories and consoles will be on Amazon.com as well as GameStop Online. Then we're back on the show floor in a really nice booth at ODG. We're going to take a look at some AR products that are actually in use right now in industry, and they're making their way over to consumer products. they got Pete Jamison here from ODG. So why don't we start, first of all, letting people know that AR is actually something people are using right now in many different industries to a large extent. So tell me about what this product is and uh, we'll segue to the consumer one after that. Sure, so basically what I'm holding in my hand is our brand new R9 product, which is uh, really a bridge product from industry and enterprise into the top end of the consumer marketplace. So today, the current product that we have, this is announced today, um, this and its companion product, the R8, will be available in the second half of the year. The current product, the R7, which is our seventh generation AR smart glasses, actually being used in a number of applications across industry, um, enterprise, B2B applications. For instance, um, healthcare, um, whether it's a surgeon working in an operating room that wants um, vital information pumped to the glasses so they don't have to take an eyes off a patient, whether it is uh, um, the ability for people with visually impaired uh, issues to wear the glasses and to be able to see again, um, the replacement of screens in various procedures, whether it's uh, arthroscopic surgery. So now instead of me having as a, as a doctor looking away and looking back, right, I, I have eyes on the patients. And basically um, wearing your computer, right? And so instead of having to look down or having it in your hands, you're actually wearing a state-of-the-art mobile computer. When you say mobile computer, this is an Android computer, right? 
That, that's correct. So what we're announcing uh, at the show is the next generation, our ACE generation. And that's basically today made up of two products, the R9 and its companion product, the, the R8. And the price on this one is a little high, right? So yeah, so this is a bridge product, right? Really after uh, light industrial into mobile media consumption and a really powerful developer platform. This is roughly, will be in the neighborhood of 1800 um, bucks when it's available in the second half of the year. And uh, it's powerful little brother, um, the R8 available roughly around the same time for less than $1,000. Wow, so it's, it's finally within a, a reach of a consumer and something that has some horsepower. This is with the new Snapdragon processor. Yeah, so they're, they both, the, the, uh, the platform, the eighth generation platform, both support the 835 processor, Snapdragon's latest and greatest um, mobile computer, basically processing chip, um, uh, 10 nanometer process, very small, incredibly powerful. Uh, the heart of the product are two stereoscopic HD displays running at 80 frames a second and 720p. Uh, 40 uh, degree field of view, so that's basically equivalent to a, roughly a 100 inch um, television at about six feet away. And that's a beautiful cinematic quality experience, right, that you can take anywhere with you. Whether you're on a train or a bus or walking down the street in your living room um, and gives you all of the experiences that you have on your mobile devices today. Familiar favorites from email to chat to browsing, but also folds in augmented reality. The ability to take digital content and inform or interact with the real world. So you can overlay things and have those things kind of line up with, with the actual thing you're looking at. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Are there some applications already ready to do that on these? Um, so, so there are er early days, right? So we're just announcing the platform. And one of the, some of the new technology that allows us to do that is we have a sixth off um, sensor, um, visual odometry that basically takes high resolution snapshots of your room and then compares that with the IMU and gives you motion vectors. So we can take digital content now and set it in the real world and actually interact with it. And then it also runs all the Android apps you might have in your account, right? Yeah, it's exactly right. Um, Android 7, uh, Nougat, so it's basically an Android computer that you wear. We have a reticle OS that, that's a wrapper OS that wraps around the top of it, and it um, allows you to get access to the IMUs, to all the cameras. Uh, this particular model has 1080p dual cameras, so it's stereoscopic display, so I can actually see 3D, and now I can actually capture 3D. Interesting. So it's got dual cameras on here to capture 3D imagery, and then that would, of course, work with anything that you could watch 3D stuff on. Exactly. So now I have the ability to capture 3D first-person videos. If I have a 3D television, I can play it on that. Um, if I have multiple headsets, I can play it on that. Very, 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 very cool technology. Very neat. Now, optically, what do we have on the other side of the... Uh, so mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about this a little bit. So these are our custom displays, um, and basically... This gives you the appearance of that big floating television that you can see around and also see through from an augmented reality perspective. We can change the opacity, the, uh, the brightness of the image. So if I want to watch a 3D movie or if I want to do mobile VR, right, where I have an interactive experience, if I want to do email, I can, I can do that now out with this giant television set and have immersive experience basically anywhere. And I see that you're controlling the, the headset with your phone. So you can get, I guess, like a mouse equivalent on your phone to control things on screen? Yeah, that's, there are a number of different ways to control it. One of them is to Bluetooth connect a phone and and whatever application I start in the glasses, the phone becomes that input device. Oh, interesting. So, so that gets around having to have a keyboard to look around with. Exactly. You, can t you have everything you need in your pocket, and there are a number of other ways to inter interface with the glasses as well. So I'm going to put these on right now. Let's take a look. They're very lightweight. Yeah, so th um, the R8s are just a tad over four ounces. I can tell you what I'm seeing in here, and I looked at these now at Pepcom the other night in a very bright room, or a relatively bright room, and now we're in this dark room, and the display quality is superb on this. It's really crisp and clear, a lot crisper than I remember it looking last time, and it is a very large screen that you see uh, in front of your face. So there's been a lot of improvement here with, uh, with this product line over the last two years. Yeah, so, I mean, one of our clear focuses is in that visual experience, and you know our goal is to deliver that visual experience that really can substitute for any of the displays in your house, right, or in your life. So whether it's your mobile phone, whether it's your tablet, whether it's your television, and then with the R9, which we'll talk about in a second, a digital cinema. I'm watching two distinct displays going into my eyes right now. You are. So each each um, 
display being run independently. And we have the IMUs turned on in the glasses for this particular apl application. So you have the ability to look in a 360 degree sphere. It's, and it's very quick, and it's, I have an HTC Vive at home, and I can say the head tracking feels as, as good as that, much better than you'd see on a mobile phone. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you see that. Yeah, it's really, it's looking pretty good here. <laughs> so, now, how do you get around getting the eyes lined up properly? Because that's often been an issue with some of these 3D things getting the right alignment. Uh, is this auto align? Um, yeah, so the one, one of the things that we do is our design supports basically anybody's IPD, right? And, and the ergonomics required to fit all head sizes, noses, ears position. So that's part of our, our intellectual property. Um, not only the design of this, but also the ability to set it up, um, calibrate it, uh, and, and deliver it, and have it work just about for everybody. What's the battery life on something like this? Uh, great question, right? So to, to be honest with you, it's very similar to your mobile uh, device. So if you're doing um, maybe familiar favorites that you do, like watching the, this movie or browsing or email or music, and you're going to get anywhere from four to six hours of battery life. If you are doing some of the more sophisticated AR or mixed reality or even mobile VR, where I have the IMUs going and I have the front-facing cameras and I have the, the, the sixth off, then you know that's that's a little bit more uh, taxing on the battery. Um, that'll last probably an hour and a half to two hours. But because this has a USB-C port on on the uh, ear horn, you can plug in an external battery and run all day. Plug yourself into your battery and you're good to go. So. Really cool stuff. So uh, when can we expect to see these? So this one will be on the marketplace from a developer perspective in the third quarter, and then ramping to full production for fourth quarter. Under $1,000. Under $1,000. Very good. Well, thanks a lot. I look forward to checking this out when it comes out. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lan.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lan.tv slash s.